crucified with Christ I've been crucified with Christ I no longer live but Christ lives in me We welcome you to our Bible study today and greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ We're going to be doing a series of Bible studies on the oneness of God Today's lesson is titled, God's Ultimate Expression, Logos. Let us begin our study today on the Greek word Logos by reading John chapter 1, verses 1 and verse 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. In a general sense, the Greek word logos means a collection. Those things which are put together in thought and having been thought out, gathered together in the mind and expressed. In other words, in the beginning was the thought the thought was with God, and the thought was God. In a spiritual context, the Greek expression, ho logos to theu, is translated into English as the word of God. This actually means the divine mind of God. Logos is the divine mind of God. His personal wisdom and divine power. This personal wisdom and divine mind cannot be separated from God. He used this divine mind and wisdom to create and to govern the universe. God had a plan from the beginning. The Bible tells us that God is immortal, invisible, and is a spirit. In John chapter 4, verse 24, the Bible said this, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17, the scripture said this, Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And notice in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, Verse 27, what this scripture says. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. The Bible also tells us that no man has ever seen God at any time. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 16, notice what the scripture says. Who only hath immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man has seen, nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Because of this, God needed a body to carry out his plan of redemption. He had this plan all worked out and thought out and had gathered all his thoughts together in his mind. It was part of him. It was his mind. Actually, it was him, the Logos. This thought, this plan, this mind, this Logos, which was God himself, became an expression. God was manifest in the flesh at the nativity of Jesus Christ. God had made himself a body and put himself inside that body. Notice 1 Timothy 3.16, what the Bible said. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. In other words, God made himself a body and called that body his son, and it was a begotten son that was born in Bethlehem. Jesus is the wisdom of God. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, 
Notice 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed to us the word of reconciliation. Once we begin to realize and understand who Christ is, we can begin to tap into true wisdom and knowledge, which gives life. Colossians chapter 2, verse 3. In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Jesus is the power of God and the wisdom of God. He is the Logos of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24, the scripture said this, But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. The Bible tells us that Jesus is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Notice 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 30. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. God used his wisdom, his divine mind, his logos to create the universe. John chapter 1 verse 3, the scripture said this, All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. The world was made by him. John chapter 1 verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. The Greek word for by used here means the instrument used to accomplish a thing, to do or to have done a thing by some person. God could not create without his mind, without his logos. In Colossians chapter 1, verses 14, 15, and 16, the Bible said this, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. God used his logos his divine mind, which housed the great plan of creation and redemption, to create all things, both visible and invisible. In Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, the scripture said this, God, who at sundry times and in divers manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Did you catch what the scripture said in these last days, spoken to us by his Son, or by his word made flesh, or his logos, by whom also he made the worlds? Again, by his divine mind, or by his logos, he made the worlds. Now let's take a closer look at 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 6. Notice what the Bible said. But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things. The Greek word translated as of means our origin, source, or cause. This verse is declaring that God is the origin and source of all things. The Greek word translated as in 
in the phrase, and we in him, means one thing, changed into another. Metaphorically, that is, several persons are said to be collected or combined into one. Remember, the Apostle Paul is talking to the church in Corinth. By whom are all things, and we by him. The Greek word translated as by, again, means the instrument used to accomplish a thing, or to do or to have done a thing by some person. Applying all these Greek prepositions used above in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6, we can see, we can give a literal expanded rendering of this verse. But to us, there is but one God, the Father out of whom come all things, and we are in Him, that is several persons, us, having been collected or combined into one, God. This collection of many into one is His church, the Bride of Christ, and one Lord Jesus Christ by whom are all things, and we by Him, that is He is the instrument God used to accomplish this thing. He used His divine mind to create the world, and this mind, this thought, this plan, this logos, is whom God used to gather all of us into Himself again. Since Jesus is the manifestation of the divine mind of God, the logos of God, He is the governor of the universe, the Lord of lords and the King of kings. Notice in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7, what the Bible said. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. He is the governor of the universe. In Daniel chapter 7 verse 13 and 14, notice what the scripture said. I saw in the night visions... And behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. In other words, they're saying there's no term limits on the governor of the universe. Notice in Zechariah chapter 14 verse 9 what the Bible said. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord, and his name one. And notice in the book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 14, what the scripture said. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For He is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with Him are called and chosen and faithful. And in Revelation, chapter 19, verse 16, this is what the Bible says. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. In conclusion, it is very evident throughout the Bible and clearly stated that there is only one God. In Isaiah chapter 43 verse 10 and 11, this is what the Bible says. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant, whom I have chosen, 
that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. And then in Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 6, the scripture said this. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. These scriptures are so evident. They are so obvious. Notice Isaiah chapter 45 verse 18. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. Jesus is the visible image of the one invisible God. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse 15, Notice what the Bible says. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. And in the book of Hebrews, chapter 1 and verse 3, notice what the Bible says. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down, on the right hand of the majesty on high. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 4, 5, and 6, the Bible has this to say. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. What a wonderful revelation these scriptures bring to us. They open our understanding to the reality of who God is. In the book of Revelation, chapter 19 and verse 13, the Bible makes this statement. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Did you catch that? The Bible is proclaiming that his name is called the Word of God. Jesus is the divine mind, the divine plan for our redemption. This plan of redemption was revealed by God through the mouth of the Apostle Peter on the day of Pentecost when he said, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Jesus is God's Logos, which was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. In John chapter 1 and verse 14, the Bible said this, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 9, the scripture said this, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, a very definitive statement by the Bible it says this, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. There's no argument there, no debate. Jesus Christ is 
the one true God. Jesus is God's ultimate expression to us. If you have any questions or any comments, you can email us at the New Covenant Apostolic Church at gmail.com or you can call us at 248-459-2130. God bless. Thank you. I've been crucified with Christ. I've been crucified with Christ. I know.